Well, the dust has settled after yet another Irish Greyhound Derby, so we've come to Mount Taylor in County Tipperary to visit this year's champion, the other Kobe. Heading into this year's Classic, just six trainers had won back-to-back -back Irish Greyhound Derbies. But not only did Jennifer O'Donnell manage to achieve that, as well as following in the footsteps of her famous father, she also managed to become the first female Greyhound trainer to do so. And she did it with two Greyhounds from the very same litter. So let's head inside and get the latest from Jennifer and her dream team and find out how they made lightning strike twice in the space of just 12 months. Well, it's been a remarkable couple of years for Jennifer O'Donnell when it comes to the Irish Greyhound Derby. And Jennifer, we're here to, to look back at Bourne Warrior and Dieter Colby. But before we concentrate on the last two winners, your derby record before Bourne Warrior managed to win it, what was it like? Um, we only had a couple of runners before that. Um, Mount Taylor Queen actually ran in it for us. She got uh, a couple of rounds. And then after that, we had Scooby Princess in 2020 and 2021. She got to the semi-finals and finished her in the consolation um, both years. And then came Born Warrior in 2022. And look, our luck changed then for 2022. We're very lucky with him. Mm. Um, he went all the way and then Kobe did in 2023 as well. Incredible. Let's look back at last year's derby. Because heading into it, Dieter Kobe and Born Warrior, would you have thought, expectation-wise, they were, they were similar enough? They were very similar. Um, Kobe probably was a little bit more of a talking dog mm. than Born Warrior because he had done very well in the Kirby and Limerick. Well, unfortunately, we had to um, withdraw him from the semi final injured. Um, Born Warrior was kind of, he was tipping away in one off races in Shelburne. He won seven or eight in a row, um, kind of bring himself up through the grades and mini opens and opens. And then he went into the, der the champion plate mm. and he won that. Um, Colby just we didn't have luck with him last year between injuries and sickness and different things um, whereas Born Warrior was absolutely flying all year yeah Colby obviously you know the derby dream was, was over before it really started but he did manage to, to get to the plate final yeah look he, the week before the derby he tried in Shelburne and there's kind of a problem with the traps and then the first round um, there's dog go mad in the traps side him and between the combination of the two he stumbled very bad coming out and his derby dream was over mm. before it even began. Um, he went into the plate and he ran very well throughout the plate um, to make the final. He just didn't have luck in the final. He got um, uh, booked from the Al traps and he was left off then for the winter racing festival. So Bournemouth was your main gun. He pushed Explosive Boy all the way in the first round. He managed to qualify. He was always doing his best early on. You get to an Irish Derby final. Expectation-wise with Bourne Warrior, what were you thinking that night? Look, we are very hopeful. We thought that if he had kept breaking the way he had during the Derby, if there was a little bit of trouble in behind, he might just stick it out and keep going. To be fair to him, the Derby final night, he just gave himself an extra push. He knew where the line was that night. He only won by half length, mm. but he really, he tries his best absolutely every night. The final of the 2022 Boyle Sports Irish Greyhound Derby in one Callaway Pro-Am, two Crafty Kokoro, three Mary's Wedding, in four Bally McFinn, five Born Warrior and six Troopies Nice One. Last moments, the hair up behind traps. And racing and a good start by five. Born Warrior. Four goes up well. Bally McFinn and Callaway Pro Am has the inside to himself, but he moves off. And Born Warrior is clear from in second. That's Bally McFinn. Then comes one. Callaway Pro Am. Crafty Kokoro starts to wind up her challenge. She's back and forth, but she checks. And Born Warrior is in the driving seat. But here comes Bally McFinn up the inside. Bally McFinn. Born Warrior. Born Warrior has won the derby for Jennifer O'Donnell. She's added another one for the O'Donnell name. Her father, Matt, trained three derby winners. Her mother, Frances, trained a derby winner a decade ago. And now Jennifer O'Donnell and the Whatever You Like Syndicate have won the derby with Born Warrior 29-53. A stunning display. Tonight, he held on a brilliant derby winner, Born Warrior. It was completely surreal. It still doesn't feel real of what happened with Born Warrior. It was such a special night, um, especially like we own the share of him ourselves mm. after breeding him. Uh, he was sold to Willie Hannon, who's a very good friend of John, and his, some of his family. So it was really, it was a very magical night.
Right, well, we've come to County Tipperary to relive the other Colby dream route up to now. And we're going to literally do it step by step, round by round, with John Mitchell and, and Jennifer O'Donnell. And John, I might start with you because being a bookie heading into the derby, what chance did you give the other Colby? Ah, he gave him a good chance, yeah. He was coming to form. He ran well in the champion stakes. Perhaps the draw was a big factor in that final anyway. And um, he was coming to form and he was being prepped all year by Jennifer and Francis for the derby. So I did give him a good squeak, yeah. Jennifer, that first night, obviously, the, the, the year before it didn't work out, but he did everything right from trap three in the first round. Yeah, he broke well from trap three in the first round and it was catch me if you can then. So he'd done what he should have done the year before. It came out well, so because he's all about early pace. Mm. And he beat the likes of Hookham and Burj Khalif. And, you know, you need to have a good dog to be able to do that. Yeah, for the first round, he looked a guaranteed leader because mm. there was five strong dogs in it. So it looked like he was going to lead and he ran well to hold on. And they closed on a bit coming home, but you'd expect that with the strong like Hookham and Marty had one their stories, dogs, all strong runners behind him, but he was out and gone and won well. Now the second round, Jennifer, it didn't happen like you hoped. He did remarkable to qualify. He did. He kind of missed a break and he was going into the bend. You wouldn't have given him much hope of qualifying, but he got himself around and showed great back straight pace and got himself into qualifying position and just done enough to hold on. A little bit lucky that night to get through. And John, is it is it nights like that makes you think maybe this could be our year? Absolutely, yeah. I came home. I remember when the traps went up that night, my heart sank. But after he qualifying, that I knew every each dog, no matter what, in the derby, gets they need a bit of looking around, and he got it that night. But in fairness to him, he stuck. I had a lot better than he would maybe perhaps twelve months previous. He's got you could see he was a bit stronger running, and he done well to qualify that night. As Jennifer said, he had a bit of luck, but he also ran well now to qualify in the position he was going to the first bend like you know we move on to the third round many reckon this is the night the derby really starts because we get to see all heats in the first night or, or the same night that night he ran against the likes of clone the duke he didn't win but he ran well he ran very well uh well met bet him that night he broke okay didn't take flyer and he showed great back straight pace down into third bend where he got caught off again so it just look he did what he had to do to qualify and in the early rounds, that's what you really need to be doing. And John, a nice like that, similar to the second round, he doesn't do everything right, but he still qualifies, and it's all about qualifying. Absolutely, yeah. Look, he, you could say he got cut off at the first bend and, and the third bend, but again, as I said in the previous round, he stuck at it well, like, you know, for him, for a front runner, he stayed at it well up to home straight and finished second. Again, we were pleased coming home that night, you know. And Jennifer, at that stage, you know, you're saying to yourself, you're halfway there. Is that when you say to yourself, right... We might have a decent chance of going all the way. You always think you have a decent chance with a dog like Colby because he's got great early pace and he's very, very fast as well. But look, a lot of things have to go right and it's six long weeks as well of the derby. So the next round, the quarter final, it's kind of the one you really want to get through because everyone wants to be there derby final night. Final, obviously, but also the cancellation is there as well. So the quarter final is always one of the tougher rounds. And John, little, little did we know, the best was still to come. Absolutely, yeah. Well, look, I had great faith in the dog. I knew the way the women were training him that he was, he was coming. Like you could see it, he was coming along gradually, and they were training him to perfection. I thought anyway, and he was improving each round. Well, we're continuing the other Kobe route to Derby final glory, and we're going to pick up from quarter final night onwards. And John. Let's start with you again because this was the only night in the derby he actually managed to get the red jacket. Yeah, you could paint it on him if we could, but um, yeah, it was a fantastic quarter final on paper, but um, he was just phenomenal that night. He was just foot perfect again and out and gone and catch me if they can and they just couldn't. And the bookie seemed to write him off earlier or in the week as well. Yeah, he opened a big price eight to one from his favourite draw. Like I couldn't believe it. Look, I know it was a good heat, but. He's a hard dog to beat when he gets the one one jacket. Look, he's he's just he loves it in there, and he showed it again that night. Mm. Jennifer, that night, as John alluded to, it was arguably one of the hottest quarterfinals I think we've ever seen in the in, in the history of the competition. It was that it was that good. Yeah, look, he hadn't any easy heats throughout the Derby, but the quarterfinal was especially tough. But even though it was tough, he was in trap one, and trap one means an awful lot to him. He loves to be on the rails, so that was. Uh, it's nearly better to be in a good semi or tough heat and a good draw than in an easier heat with a bad draw. So he really done well that night. He wins in twenty nine fifteen. He books his place in the semi final. 
you're in two, but again, you get the much tougher semi-final draw. Yeah, it was, look, it was hard to sink when the dogs were being pulled out for that semi-final. But again, look, you have to just soldier on, and he was in two, good, good enough draw for him. Again, he was just a laddie down, he's inside, and good dogs, and he's outside. But again, I was, we were talking during the week, we knew if he could hit the front, he more than likely could qualify, and he did. And I was happy enough that he didn't do as big a run in the as in the quarter final because it's hard to keep that up for the three rounds, you know, mm. for the, to the final. But Jennifer, he does manage to win, but he manages to, to knock out a couple of big names in the process. Yeah, look, it was a very tough semi final, so it was. Um, it really opened up the Derby final. Then um, with Hoffa going out, he was the talking dog throughout the Derby. Kobe was a little bit underrated by some because Hoffa was such a talking dog throughout. Um, but he really did. He did everything he had to that night to get himself through. Clocks don't really matter at that point because it's all about qualifying. So you're in a derby final. The draw is made, obviously, in semi-final light. You're in trap two. What's your initial thoughts? Yeah, look, so we were hoping for the one, but the two was the next best. Um, I was a bit, was talking to yourself Monday, I was a bit sceptical, could he clear the one? I was 70-30 that he would, and... I needn't have worried, he just he bombed away and that was it. That was He was paw perfect and he had to be, as I said to you that night, the Bacos bitch and Ben Steady ran a fantastic race too, like in fairness to him, as did the, uh, the other finals, but he was just paw perfect like on the night, you know, mm. super. Away they go and a good start by two. The other Kobe leads to the bend. Bacos, Crystal and Music glide away. Well met, Ben's Teddy in 3-6-5. But on the bend and Kobe leads into the back straight. Bacos, Crystal second. Then comes one well met and Ben's Teddy is starting to make his move. But it's the other Kobe. His brother won it 12 months ago. Born Warrior. He leads by two. Bacos, Crystal closes the gap. But the other Kobe leads to the line. And the other Kobe wins the dance. Little Brothers, year after year, Born Warrior last year, the other Kobe this year. Well done to Jennifer O'Donnell. Mm. Jennifer, obviously you watch it from the infield. In a matter of stride, you knew he led. So is that a little bit of the, the pressure off? At this stage, you know this might happen, actually happen. Yeah, look, when he's in front, you're kind of always watching to see who's coming behind. But he is a lot stronger this year than he had been last year. So you'd be fairly confident when he is in front. It's going to take a very, very good dog with clear passage to catch him when he's in front like that. Yeah. John, you're watching from the stand, so he does a remarkable split. He does a 1688 to the third bend. Yeah. But the hard part's still to come. Yeah, sure. Look, uh, to be honest, I was watching behind more so than him because I knew he'd open up down the back. I think Teddy Hegarty, who bought, had a... Uh, Sharon had a plan in buying the dog. Was he always waxes lyrical about Kobe down the back? He's one of the fastest in Ireland, if not the fastest down the back straight. So I was sort of watching behind, but I knew he, I knew the way he was running. He was going to keep. It was going to take an, an, an extraordinary effort for someone to catch him, like you know, especially the way he trapped and opened up a lead. But as I said, he had to do everything Bob Murphy because the two in behind ran crackers, but he was just out and gone, and they couldn't catch him. And Jennifer, you're watching from the infield. Did you know? Because sometimes it can be difficult to, to know what's happened if, if you're watching from the infield. It's very difficult from the inside because your angles and perspective is totally different than on the sand. I actually thought Ben's Teddy was closer than what he was mm. to him because it was him that I was watching and um, Bacchus Crystal as well. But no, it's you're always listening for Ian's commentary as well because it was from the inside it looked closer than what it actually was with the half length. And John, the scenes afterwards, were they similar to the year before? Ah, they were, yeah. It was great. We always, we always, I go most Saturday night celebrating, we always up around the winning line, but we all gathered there and we were just jumping up and down with joy. It was fantastic. Francis was in the middle of us and Willie Hanlon, my dad was there, he was crying, Gee, oh, friends and family. It was just fabulous. Like, you know, it's. I said to myself, we're lucky enough to win it. I try to take it in a bit more because Bar Warriors year sort of passed me by the celebrations, but. Again, this year passed me by. It's just, it's hard to take everything in, but it's, it was great. Like, it's just, it's hard to explain how, 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 how you'd feel, like, you know. And Jennifer, does it get much better than, than winning the second derby back to back? Um, look, to win two back to back, it's just brilliant. It's what everyone dreams of. Um, like, we'll try again next year, but it's going to be very, very tough.